We've got Bobby Moynihan, Sashir Zameda, Judah Friedlander, and they're talking about their new movie, Albert. So, all right, Bobby, what is this movie about? Uh, Albert is uh, the story uh, of a young Christmas tree named Albert, a small Douglas fir. Of course. And, uh, and his friends, Maisie and Jean, um, who are a palm tree and a weed. Um, <laughs> and they are going on an adventure to uh, uh, travel to Empire City because uh, Albert wants to be the uh, Empire City Christmas tree. Okay, fantastic. So this I, I'd like to add that this is animated. Correct. <laughs> animated. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so you didn't get like method. You guys weren't out there in the well, woods. Well, we did. But, oh, you but did. They wound up making it. They didn't animation. use any of that. We footage. spent six months in the woods together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a wonderful six time. Six months. Six yeah. months. We're really getting to know each other. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. and then it uh, they just animated them. And then they decided to animate it, which yeah. was a good choice, I think. Yeah. They use the same audio though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, what was the process? Because for animated movies, it seems to take a long time. Um, to put them together. Uh, when did you guys originally get involved in this? 1962, okay. we started. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, for about a year we did um, uh, recordings for, you know, once we found out uh, that we got cast, we started recording and it's, keep going back, you know, you do some stuff and then they do some animation, you come back and, and do some more. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and this is just a reminder, everyone out there on Facebook, if you've got comments, questions, send them in. We're talking about the new movie, Albert. It's about a talking Christmas tree. Um, and now tell me about, uh, Sashir, your character, your palm tree, also named Maisie. Yeah. It makes me think of Maisie Williams in Game of Thrones, but what can you tell us about Maisie? <laughs> um, not like Maisie Williams from <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> very different. She's just very cheery and, uh, and sunny and also is a big supporter of Albert and really wants him to become the Empire Christmas tree. Okay. So I'm just doing all I can to help him get motivated and get nice. driven to do that job. It's so, the best wingman. Yes. <laughs> so Judah, then how does your character Gene come into it? Well, you know, the weed is... <laughs> Is he a welcome weed, or how does Well, that's he... just the thing, you know. Most people look at weeds, and they think it's something not worth living or not worth being in the neighborhood. Which is very and sad. weeds are survivors, and they're smart, uh, they're scrappy, and, you know, they, they know all the different plants uh, in the neighborhood, so they know how to survive and get around. So I think Gene really comes... Uh, to your help a lot. There's no, there's no Albert without Gene. Yeah, you know, because Gene even has contact, even though he's, you know, from the country, he's got contacts in the city too. No, very, nice. very well connected. Yeah. Man. Oh, that's what you needed in weed. Yeah. Um, so now you guys said you started this in 1962, but <laughs> yeah, what was? It was a great year. <laughs> <laughs> times were different. But it was a great so, different times. Uh, how did they put it together? Was it you guys laying down voice and then they made the characters match you, or was it like seeing yourself also as a tree or a weed? Uh, that's always my favorite part of doing animation. Is just you get to go do this. You know, just go have fun and be silly in, in front of a in front of a mic, and then a group of probably thousands of very, very talented, uh, amazing people make you look amazing. And the reward is kind of when you get to see the finished product of, uh, of what they've done. But uh, it's, it's kind of a cooler yeah. end result as a performer. It's kind of cooler than being in uh, a non-animated movie because uh, you know, the end result is a much bigger surprise, really. Because yeah. you know, a lot of times when you're in something, you and it's just regular you know what people, you live action, you, you kind of know how it's going to turn out. Right. But when it's animation, you really don't know that much. So yeah, it's, a it's lot fun. There's options. It's yeah. like, whoa, <laughs> my character can do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, is this, I can't do that. Is this like the first uh, animated movie that you did this year? Or? Yeah, it is. Okay. This is a, I've done like tiny voiceover things. You were in things. like Call of Duty, right? Or? Yes, yeah, and I'm still oh, recording wow. that too. So yeah, we already recorded Jeez. one game and we're doing yeah, another one that's now. awesome. Yeah. What is that like being Call of Duty? It's cool. It's a lot of like, <laughs> uh! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of like fight noises. But I, I did when they, I first got asked, I was like, am I going to be like a a soldier? Like, I didn't know what I was going right. to but they have a zombie branch, like a whole arm of other worlds that they, they explore. So, yeah, there's like a game where, like, I'm an actor who gets sucked into a movie that, and we fight zombies, which is really cool. That's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Bobby, you were in Inside Out. You've been mm -hmm. in, I mean, what was Inside Out like? Because 
That's amazing. And uh, do you think we'll ever see Bing Bong again? Oh, gosh, I hope so, yeah. right? Um, we will in our hearts. Um, <laughs> no. uh, Inside Out was a blast. I mean, uh, I had done uh, Monsters University with Pixar and then uh, um, did uh, Inside Out as well. Uh, Daniel Chang was one of the uh, uh, writers uh, of uh, Inside Out, and um, I, I had met him, and they brought in me and Paula Poundstone, and that was they flew us out there together, and that was one of the only animated things I've done where I was in the room the whole time with the other actress and, and we got to improvise and, and play off each other. It's a really quick scene, but like they used a lot of the stuff we improvised and it was absolutely amazing. And then uh, Daniel Chung is the creator of We Bear Bears and I ended up working on, on that as well with him because he's, he's a genius. That's awesome. Yeah. Any other Pixar movies coming up that we should know about? Um, probably. I'm not in them, but I think you should check them out. I think, they're, <laughs> I think yeah. there's an Incredibles 2 coming out. There's a lot of great stuff. Yeah, they have a I full slate movies, lined up. Yeah, I hear yeah. their movies do well. Yeah, yeah they're, pretty, they're pretty fun. Judah, what about you uh, for an animated movie? Is this like one of the first ones you've No, I've, I've done stuff before. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done a fair amount. Not a lot, but it's fun. I mean, I like animation. I used to do animation when I was a kid. I used to make my own animated short films on uh, Super 8 movie films. Wow, that's amazing. Millimeter movie films. So I've always uh, liked the animation, so it's always kind of a, uh, it's always a cool thing to be a part of, you know. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a very tedious and long creative process, and not everyone uh, appreciates that, yeah. Um, so this is a holiday movie. Uh, what are some of your favorite holiday movies that you always check out every year? Christmas Story. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoy Christmas Eve on Sesame Street. Like oh, really? That. I, I enjoy that a great deal. And we were just talking about the, the Star Wars Christmas special to me is... I haven't seen it, but it's Oh, really? Great. It's, insa it's an insane piece of, of, of art. No. It truly you know, is. Life Day is, is one of the most forgotten holidays. <laughs> it's true. It's true. In the world. And, have you uh, seen it? To all the Wookiees out No, there. I don't think I have seen the Star Wars. Do story. yourself a favor. Find, find a bootleg of it. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah. Cameraman's 19, seen it. 1978. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I'll definitely George Lucas has tried to ban it. But there's bootleg copies floating around. Is it fan yeah. made or was no? no it, it was uh, TV network made. In the 70s, made. when yeah. Star Wars did so well, they were like fast track a Christmas special, and there's like they built rebuilt a very cardboard looking Millennium Falcon set, and just kind of threw a bunch of aliens in there and made a, a made a weird thing, and they they tr actively, I believe, actively don't even acknowledge its, its existence. Yeah. Now, if you guys are just tuning in, we're obviously talking about the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> obviously. Um, As we are, we all. If you have uh, questions and comments, send them in. We're talking about Albert, which is a new, and it's actually Nickelodeon's first animated movie for television, yeah. which is crazy because they have Hey Arnold, they have all these cartoons. I mean, what's that like? How, did, when did you even find out about that? Um, when they called us and told us yeah. that, uh, to, for the it's, audition. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to say yes unless I knew it was the first animated movie. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> You'll <laughs> only be in the, I'll only be in the first yeah. of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Smart move. But, you know, growing up on Nickelodeon and watching those shows, like, it's, it's, they do such good work, it's great to be a, a part of that, that first one. It's really wonderful. Do you think we could have an Albert II coming up? Hopefully. Yeah, let's right. not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's uh, Albert you know, but, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, who knows? Yeah. So... All right, this is about a Christmas tree trying to be the big Christmas tree out in, like, it's Empire City, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what are some of your favorite memories from, like, you know, lighting up the Christmas tree at, at 30 Rock? My first year on SNL, I thought I was going to get fired because I, on writing night, just completely abandoned all work and ran downstairs to the Christmas tree lighting because the Muppets were there. Really? And just spent hours. There were a lot of children and me trying to meet the Muppets. And I, I just remember, like, they were, like, getting texts, like, where are you? You're supposed to be writing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm with Gonzo. Now, you are, yeah, your Twitter <laughs> picture is you and Gonzo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're a big Muppets <laughs> fan. Uh, yeah, Dave Goles uh, played Gonzo. He actually came to the show this week. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I hang out with him a lot now. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah, he's the best. I enjoy those guys. They're, they, it's a dying art, and they do a really good job at it. What about uh, Judah? Favorite holiday memory in New York City? Oh, in New York City? Oh, I don't know. We were talking about this earlier, but New York is, when the, when the city uh, empties out on the holidays, it's really pretty great because it's, it's like there's a quarter of the population that's normally here, and it's, you feel like you can just yeah, it's like a walk ghost. around and you just kind of own it. You know, it's great. But I, I was actually an elf at Macy's one year, 
And I remember people, I was doing, I was new to, I was, I was like, I was 22, so I hadn't been doing stand-up that long. I started stand-up when I was 19, so I was still very new at stand-up. But I would know people who would never come to see me do stand-up shows, but they would come to see me work at Macy's as an elf and then just <laughs> laugh at me <laughs> in the ridiculous elf costume. And they would like go out of their way to just show up and just laugh at like that was my job. <laughs> Did you have a routine as the elf at Macy's? Well, it's pretty interesting, the whole elf at Macy's thing, because there's a lot of elves. Sure. And there's actually a lot of Santa Clauses. They don't tell you that. Oh. They have six different Santa Clauses. Scoop. Yeah, Everyone listen You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. There's some, a lot of crazy stories there. So we have some comments Should coming in. Should probably be investigated. Um, <laughs> Aldo says, uh, damn, Bobby, he's awesome. Uh, Edward That's says, nice. Thank you. what is your favorite animated Nickelodeon series? So what do you guys think? Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, I watched so much of Nickelodeon. Um, I liked Hey Arnold. Yeah. All Real Monsters. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. What else did I... I'm a little older. I, I, go, I, I go, like, it's not animated, but there was animated aspects, like Out of Control and uh, 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 You Can't Do That on Television. Like, I loved those shows, like Weird Canadian. And that show was on television. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> you can't do that on you television. You can't do it on television. And it was on they TV. They did. <laughs> um, Pretty amazing. Yeah. Like Rugrats and, like, like that. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are You Afraid of the Dark, which is not animated, but I watched that a lot. Clarissa explains it all. I mean, anything on Snake. I was well, yeah, all those it. old school Nickelodeon shows are awesome. And they're yeah. bringing a lot of them back. What they, didn't, they didn't have television when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. They had, just had they, the animated yeah, it hadn't been invented yet. Yeah. <laughs> we had to just go see puppet shows. Oh, that's awesome, though. Puppet shows are fun. Um, <laughs> Which ones are they bringing back, you know? Uh, well, I know um, Nickelodeon is bringing back like a Hey Arnold movie. It's going well, that's why, uh, like, Albert's the first one coming to TV. It's yeah, that is surprising to me. Because, I, yeah, I would have assumed there was already a Hey Arnold movie. Right. Mm -hmm. There's so many of them out there. Um, so, all right. Now, this is obviously uh, pretty awesome because it's good to have stuff to look forward to nowadays. Um, it's a very emotional time. I think uh, nothing really summed it up better than like Kate McKinnon's Hallelujah performance on SNL. And I would just love to hear, how did that happen, like the process from when it was pitched and what was it like being there and seeing that? Um, I believe it was a very late addition. I believe they were, we were, they were trying a lot of different things and a lot of, of different stuff and then, I mean, Kate McKinnon's an uh, absolute machine that, that she can do anything. So I think it was just like, let's put Kate out there and let her do what she does best, which is performing. So. Yeah, I think it was, it was whittled down from a lot of things to just like, I think they're just like, the best thing we can do is just make it simple and have Kate out there yeah. singing. And, yeah. I have a question. For the cold opens in general, are those often changed? I mean, I'm sure, thing, I know things are always there tweaked last mm -hmm. minute for all the sketches constantly, but is the cold open... Is that often like completely made new, like that day? Sometimes, depending on what's going on. A lot of the times it'll be like at the read through on Wednesday, there'll be two possible cold opens oh, or two okay. sketches that could possibly. Gotcha. Sometimes they'll write a cold open and then write like another political sketch that if right, cause something to figure out happens happen. or whatever, yeah. we can switch that into the cold open. But I remember on this one in particular, like. Alec is so good and he's so vocal and like he wants sure. to true do fun things yeah. so like it, he, his stuff changes a lot so he he kind of improvises with you and, sure. and 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 that changes and then like very last minute they did a bunch of pence like a lot of stuff with Hamilton like that had just happened the mm -hmm. day before so they added some stuff in like that came in very late on Saturday gotcha for this past week yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. There was some uh, cold open that was a football one, mm -hmm. and there, I think I think the game was Saturday before the show, so we were just like waiting, waiting to know to see which team won. won. Wow! And then like based on that, that's how the sketch would go. Yeah. How is that when you have to just run on and, and do something? Not scary in the slightest bit at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. Very uh, chill. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they all of a sudden you're about to do live television and they're like, um, these are all brand new stuff. It's on the card, so just read it. And you're like, I'm. Yeah, the cute on card. camera in front of millions of people, oh, and reading. you're reading it for the first time. Sometime that does happen, right? Oh yeah, yeah it's that, happened that, to me that a couple was the times. Bye-bye guy. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and those cue card guys, you see it because they genius. There's and there's just stacks of them because they're changed constantly. Yeah, yeah. Wally Ferriston, the guy, he's yeah. been doing it forever, and uh, I've been in sketches where he's holding a card. He's got a 
Sharpie in his mouth and a piece of tape, and he's taping over lines. Like, not and all of them, just it. like certain words, because they're like, we need 15 seconds or something. So he's right. just, or he'll dump a card, like, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a, that's another dying art. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. they, won't, they won't use monitors, because Lauren says, I trust people, I don't trust computers. Like, and wow. we'll, they've been oh, doing it forever, yeah. and Wally's there. He's, he's like just, the king of cue cards. Yeah. yeah, he does it for a bunch of shows. Yeah. 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 He's uh, the best. Yeah, and uh, the, like we were just talking about the cold opening um, with Trump. I mean, you were with Alec Baldwin for years on Thirty yeah. Rock. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that and, and his impression of Trump so far? Well, I know. I mean, I think he does a good job, you know. But I think, uh, you know, I mean, these are, uh, you know, the times we're in. I, I think most people are underestimating uh, how bad things can possibly get, and. Uh, it's important for everybody to speak up. You know, I think most people aren't. I think most of the news media is not doing their job. And uh, yes, the more people that speak out, the better. That's like, uh, you know, the actor in Hamilton, what he did was good, you know. And the more people that do it, the easier it'll, it'll be to do it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, you guys brought kind of that to light. You kind of keep conversation about that going on SNL. and. Someone who's not happy about that is the president-elect, who keeps tweeting negative things about SNL, saying it's it's very unfunny. And um, uh, last night was totally one-sided and biased. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on kind of those tweets coming out and his reaction? I mean, I don't care about what it's like he says. Like picking on the littlest <laughs> kid in school. Like we're just trying to be, make people laugh. You know, it's like our job is to do that show. But I mean. Also to poke fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. But I, to, to get to get angry but at he's that, just, it, it just seems... shows how thin-skinned he is. And um, why is he watching? <laughs> Shouldn't he be working on something? Like he Preparing has so something. much time <laughs> to watch the show and critique it. Now, people were after the election looking for some optimism, and one of the things was possibly Alec Baldwin four more years on SNL. What do you think about that possibility? I mean, Alex could be uh, Alex. Alex could be a cast member on the show. Totally, he's that great. He's I mean, so good. We'll 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 take him when he wants to do it. You know. Yeah. Um, Me and Sashir make all the decisions at SNL, so <laughs> they have to go true. through us. I train Alec on his impression. <laughs> I'm like tweaking it every every yeah. now and again. It's amazing. That's, you guys I'm on the side of yourself. the camera, like <laughs> more, more. <laughs> You're doing a great job, then. Because it's Thank going pretty you. well. Yeah. And Alec won't do anything we say unless he talks to Judah first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of that. Currently, I'm not returning his call. <laughs> so, so it's a lot more work for you two. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. He's, He's just there. I'm, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> now, speaking about being a busy guy, though, would you ever be interested in, like, if 30 Rock got together for a reunion show or anything? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, Tina Fey and, you know, Robert Carlock, and, you know, they're the, you know, the head writers on that, and, you know, Tina's the star and creator. It's like... Uh, yeah, if they were to do that again, I would do it again. Sure, I mean it was they're, they're you know they're, you know so good at what they do. So it's always good to work with good people. You know I don't think it's going to happen. I mean I don't, I don't think that was ever the plan, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, if it came up, sure. A Thirty Rock Christmas special. Yeah, that might be fun. <laughs> yeah. We're still talking about the Star Wars one. Yeah. 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 Years later. I would be in a Star Wars Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> now, you got to see it, dude. Yeah. I'm definitely checking we were, we were it out. Earlier, like the first 30 minutes, there's no word spoken. No English It's dialogue. Chewbacca's family just talking to each other in, in no Runty subtitles. He's a well, I'm going to have to. We're spending like yeah. 30 minutes promoting it. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a boost yeah. in, uh, yeah. in, in bootleg sales. Christmas Christmas. Also, amazing. best part about... Best part about it is you can only get bootleg copies of it, and the best yeah. part is they have all the commercial breaks. Yeah, oh, that's cool. So it's like these Kenner toys and super outdated like Woolite commercials, and it's just a fascinating. It's almost as fascinating. Yeah, as and as the as bumpers. You see itself. the bumpers yeah. too. Yeah. Now, um, talking about Star Wars, Judah. Yeah. You were in. The first oh, I'm in it for about half a second. But you were yeah. in it, yeah. which is so crazy. Yeah. Can you? How did that come up? That's amazing. Wait, which one? Yeah, the the oh, last Swagans. one came out. Yeah, I'm in it for half a second. I I mean, That's I looked it coolest. up. I was like, that is yeah. him. That's the coolest thing. How did that yeah. How did that come up? How did you get in Star Wars? Yeah, well, it was. Uh, I've known J J Abrams for 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 a while, and uh, I've I've never asked him for anything. Uh, like <laughs> I remember, like I think I auditioned for I auditioned for Alias uh, wow. for, for him, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, 
And but we hadn't officially met them. But you know, he was in. You know, he was auditioning me. You know, and uh, but then y years later, I met him and became friends with him. We actually uh, uh, were fans of the same um, filmmaker. Uh, this guy Don Doler uh, was from Baltimore, not too far from where I grew up, and he made these really just insane sci-fi horror movies. And then he also used to put out his own magazine about how to do your own special effects. And most people watching these movies would probably be shocked that movies can be that bad. They, they probably <laughs> wouldn't know. And so anyways, I was a fan of those movies. And I, when I was in high school, I was making my own little special effects movies and animated movies. And, and I, I called Don Dohler when I was in high school. to I just like looked him up in the phone book, called him up. and just trying to get advice from him. And when That's J.J. So cool. Abrams was 14, he actually did a lot of the soundtrack for one of Don Dohler's movies. Uh, and this is all pre-internet. Yeah. So the magazine used to have, like, you can have pen pals and try to write to other young filmmakers and trade ideas and stuff. It was That's like pre-internet. Cool. So, so me and J.J. have that, that love of Don Dohler. And uh, so at some point, like, we became friends and because uh, I knew that, that he was a Dohler fan and I was too. And... And it was just like, couldn't believe it. And uh, dudes. yeah, and I had never. Um, he had t shirts, man. So I'd known him for years, never asked him for anything. And when I found out he was doing Star Wars, I basically said, I'm like, dude, I would love to do anything. I'll show up anywhere on the planet. I don't care if I have lines. I don't care if I'm in a giant costume. I will do anything. And they were filming in England. Uh, so I booked myself some stand up shows over there when they were maybe going to be filming it. And uh, and then and then their shoot got delayed because Harrison Ford broke his foot or his ankle. Yeah. Right. So I was still out there doing my shows, and then I didn't think it was going to happen. And then like six months later, I got a call from one of the producers saying, "Hey, we're going to be uh, we're going to be going again." And then I booked myself some more shows, <laughs> and then I wound up. So I was on set for like a couple days. That's and it so was, cool. It was so cool, dude. I met so I met awesome. BB-8 and the guy who controls BB-8 and everything, and yeah, it was it was great. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so I can't was, believe Harrison Ford almost stopped uh, your cameo appearance. Yeah, uh, well, right you know, I know, the <laughs> nerve, right? I didn't want you to steal the scene. But yeah. it was just, uh, so it was like one of those things where I was, you know, completely just lucky to be a part of it, and I, you know, I just, and he was, he was so cool to do it, and uh, like, until, until the day I was there, I still didn't even know what I was going to be doing, and, uh, but it, it was, it was a real thrill, just like a total, like being a kid and just, you know, it's so like awesome. you're getting the best birthday present ever and you can't believe it. Yeah, so it was, it was fun. Yeah. Now, talking about that with a lot of special effects to maybe something that. And I've never didn't... asked anyone for anything ever before. <laughs> just, just, you know, but it's a it, good one to but, cash in. But on. this one, I was like, I was like, I was like, dude, I'll just, I'll just show up. I don't care where you are. I'll be there. It's you know? amazing. So, I mean, yeah. I watched Force Awakens like four times in theaters. Yeah. So it was pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, we do have a comment. Um, Alexandra is saying, uh, any idea what David S. Pumpkins does for Thanksgiving or the winter holidays? Uh, his own thing. His own yeah. thing. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, can you quickly talk about um, how that idea came up? And also, what does the S stand for in David S. I'm so glad Pumpkins? you asked, because no one has asked. Re yeah. <laughs> really? It's the first time, because there is an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the idea came about me and Mikey Day and Streeter Seidel were trying to write something together. We we like working together, but me and Mikey just wanted to do some weird dancing thing, and it was a lot of weird ideas. And around five o'clock in the morning, Mikey just went, "What if he was David Pumpkins?" And then I said, "What if it was David S. Pumpkins?" <laughs> And she said, what does the S stand for? And we said, uh, Simon. <laughs> David Simon. <laughs> David Pumpkins. Simon Pumpkins. <laughs> I like it. For no reason whatsoever. It was a lot of the idea of just like, why is this person here? Because he is. And we just thought that was funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think we're kind of getting towards our time. So we'll wrap it up with this question from Antoinette. But she says, for everyone, what is the next project you're working on? Um... I am. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are currently in the middle of a really big yeah, we're show, currently right? In yeah, yeah, yeah. The middle of our season of <laughs> SNL. Uh, I'm shooting a stand-up special for oh, CISO. Oh, nice. Great. Yeah. Uh, Great. December 20th in New Orleans, and it comes out awesome. in March. And I'm very excited awesome. about it. Awesome. Cool. Well, now, what about you, Jude? Two things. Uh, I did a short-form web series for The Onion and TechCrunch. 
and AOL, I guess, is the parent company. Yeah. All right. Uh, called Judah versus the Machines. So I think it's going to start streaming in January. So it's about eight episodes. I think each one's around six or so minutes, and it's me interviewing different uh, AI and robotics companies uh, about what they're doing. I mean, it's, it's comedy also. It, okay. it, it, it looks really good. I just saw some of it. It actually, it actually looks really good. Did so. you find out scary things? Yeah, it sounds like, very oh, like man. ex machina. I have to stay tuned. Oh, like wow. a nice commercial. But I'm, 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 team, I'm team human all the way. Yeah. I'm team human all the way. I think all I the am way, as well. Yeah. All the way. And then I'm working on my own stand-up project. It was supposed to already be out. Uh, I've decided to self-produce and make it myself, which is cool. maybe a really dumb decision. And it <laughs> should have been done about eight months ago. Uh, <laughs> and now with, you know, all these changes that are going on in this country and everything, you know, it's changing even more and uh, so I've been filming it myself it's gonna be a little more it's gonna be a stand-up performance film but it'll be a little bit documentary too and that's called so I'm hoping to have it done uh, by January and that it's it's called uh, it's one of my jokes from uh, the stand-up it's uh, America is the greatest country in the United States <laughs> nice. that's the name of it. well put so hey everyone look out for that and also Albert which is December 9th on Nickelodeon. Thank you to our guests. Thank Thanks you a lot. Thank you. See you guys next time. Inside Out, you've been mm -hmm. in. I mean, what was Inside Out like? Because that's amazing. And uh, do you think we'll ever see Bing Bong again? Oh, gosh, I hope so, yeah. right? Um, we will in our hearts. <laughs> um, no. uh, Inside Out was a blast. I mean, uh, I had done uh, Monsters University with Pixar and then... Uh, um, did uh, Inside Out as well. Uh, Daniel Chang was one of the uh, uh, writers uh, of uh, Inside Out, and um, I, I had met him, and they brought in me and Paula Poundstone, and that was they flew us out there together, and that was one of the only animated things I've done where I was in the room the whole time with the other actress, and and we got to improvise and, and play off each other. It's a really quick scene, but like they used a lot of the stuff we improvised, and it was. Absolutely amazing, and then uh, Daniel Chung is the creator of We Bear Bears, and I ended up working on on that as well with him because he's he's a genius. That's awesome. Yeah. Any other Pixar movies coming up that we should know about? Um, probably. I'm not in them, but I think you should check them out. I think they're <laughs> I think yeah. there's an Incredibles two coming yeah. out. There's a lot of great stuff. Yeah, they have a I full slate movies, lined up. Yeah, I hear yeah. their movies do well. Yeah, yeah they're, pretty, they're pretty fun. Judah, what about you? Uh, for an animated movie, is this like one of the first ones you? No, I've I've done stuff before. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done a fair amount. Not a lot, but it's fun. I mean, I like animation. I used to do animation when I was a kid. I used to make my own animated short films on uh, Super 8 movie films. Wow, that's amazing. Millimeter movie films. So I've always uh, liked the animation. So it's always kind of a, uh, it's always a cool thing to be a part of, you know. It's, uh, it's, a, it's you know, it's a very tedious and long creative. The Thrones, but what can you tell us about Maisie? <laughs> Um, not like Maisie Williams from Game <laughs> of Thrones. <laughs> very different. She's just very cheery and uh, and sunny, and also is a big supporter of Albert, and really wants him to become the Empire Christmas tree. Okay. So I'm just doing all I can to help him get motivated and get nice. driven to do that job. It's so the best wingman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Judah then. How does your character, Gene, come into it? Well, you know, the weed is... <laughs> <laughs> is he a welcome weed, or how does Well, that's he... just the thing, you know. Most people look at weeds, and they think it's something not worth living or not worth being in the neighborhood. Which is very and sad. weeds are survivors, and they're smart, uh, they're scrappy, and, you know, they, they know all the different plants uh, in the neighborhood, so they know how to survive and get around. And so, I think Gene really comes uh, to your help a lot. There's no, there's no Albert without Gene. Yeah, you know, because Gene even has contact, even though he's, you know, from the country, he's got contacts in the city too. No, very, nice. very well connected. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's what you need in weed. Yeah. Um, so now you guys said you started this in 1962, but yeah, what was? It was a great year. <laughs> <laughs> times were different. But it was a great so, different times. And how did they put it together? Was it you guys laying down voice and then they made the characters match you, or was it like seeing yourself also as a tree or a weed? It's a process, and not everyone uh, appreciates that. Yeah. Um, so this is a holiday movie. Uh, what are some of your favorite holiday movies that you always check out every year? 
Christmas Story. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy Christmas Eve on Sesame Street. I oh, really? That. I, I enjoy that a great deal. And we were just talking about the, the Star Wars Christmas special to me is... I haven't seen it, but it's Oh, really? Great. It's, ins it's an insane piece of, of, of art. No, it truly you know, is. Life Day is, is one of the most forgotten holidays. <laughs> it's true. It's true in the world. And have you uh, seen it? To all the Wookies out. No, I don't think I have seen the Star Wars. Do thing. yourself a favor. Find find a bootleg of it. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. Cameron 19, hasn't seen it. Nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I'll definitely George Lucas has tried to ban it, but there's bootleg copies floating around. Is it fan ban. made or was? No, no it, it was uh, TV network made. In the 70s, made. when yeah. Star Wars did so well, they were like, fast track a Christmas special. And there's like, they built, rebuilt a very cardboard looking Millennium Falcon set and just kind of threw a bunch of aliens in there and made a, a, made a weird thing. And they, they tr actively, I believe, actively don't even acknowledge its, its existence. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you guys are just tuning in, we're obviously talking about the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> Obviously. Um, As we are, we so all. If you have uh, questions and comments, send them in. We're talking about Albert, which is a new... And it's actually Nickelodeon's first animated movie for television, yeah. which is crazy because they have Hey Arnold, they have all these cartoons. I mean, what's that like? How, did, when did you even find out about that? Um, when they called us and told us yeah. that, uh, to, for it's, the audition. Yeah. Um, uh, that's always my favorite part of doing animation is just you get to go do this, you know, just go have fun and be silly in, in front of a in front of a mic and then a group of probably thousands of very, very talented, uh, amazing people make you look amazing. And the reward is kind of when you get to see the finished product of, uh, of what they've done. But it's, uh, it's kind of a cooler yeah. end result as a performer. It's kind of cooler than being in uh, a non-animated movie because... Uh, you know, the end result is a much bigger surprise, really. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of times when you're in something you, and it's just regular you know people, you live action, you, you kind of know how it's going to turn out. Right. But when it's animation, you really don't know that much. So yeah, it's, a it's lot fun. There's more options. It's yeah. like, whoa, <laughs> my character can do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, is this, I can't do that. Is this like the first uh, animated movie that you did this year? Or? Yeah, it is. Okay. This is, uh, I've done like tiny voiceover You were things. in like Call of Duty, right? Or? Yes, yeah, and I'm still oh, recording wow. that too. So yeah, cool. we already recorded See, one game and we're doing yeah, another one Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What is that like, being Call of Duty? It's cool. It's a lot of like, uh! <laughs> 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 a lot of like, fight noises. But I, I did, when they, I first got asked, I was like, am I going to be like a, a soldier? Like, I didn't know what I was going right. to but they have a zombie branch, like a whole arm of other worlds that they, they explore. So, yeah, there's like a game where, like, I'm an actor who gets sucked into a movie that, and we fight zombies, which is really cool. That's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Bobby, you were in, and so we've got Bobby Moynihan, Sashir Zameda, Judah Friedlander, and they're talking about their new movie, Albert. So, all right, Bobby, what is this movie about? Uh, Albert is uh, the story uh, of a young Christmas tree named Albert, a small Douglas fir. Of course. And, uh, and his friends, Maisie and Jean, um, who are a palm tree and a weed. Um, <laughs> and they are going on an adventure to uh, uh, travel to Empire City because uh, Albert wants to be the uh, Empire City Christmas tree. Okay, fantastic. So this I, I'd like to add that this is animated. Correct. <laughs> animated. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you didn't get like method. You guys weren't out there in the woods. Well, we did. But, oh, you but did. They wound up making it they animation. Didn't use any of that we spent six months in the woods together. <laughs> yeah, it was a wonderful six time. Six months. Six yeah. months. We're really getting to know each other. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. and then it uh, they just animated them. And then they decided to animate it, which yeah. was a good choice, I think. They yeah. use the same audio though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, what was the process? Because for animated movies, it seems to take a long time. Um, to put them together. Uh, when did you guys originally get involved in this? 1962, okay. we started. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, for about a year we did um, uh, recordings for, you know, once we found out uh, that we got cast, we started recording and it's, keep going back, you know, you do some stuff and then they do some animation, you come back and, and do some more. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and this is just a reminder, everyone out there on Facebook, if you've got comments, questions, send them in. We're talking about the new movie, Albert. It's about a talking Christmas tree. Um, and now tell me about, uh, Sashir, your character, you're a palm tree, also named Maisie. Yeah. It makes me think of Maisie Williams in Game of Thrones.